Ah, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So, just a minute there. There we go. I just want to welcome everybody here to the Robert Schiller Ministries, a church with no walls. And, and we are having a church service here. And uh, so I just want to welcome you here to this opportunity to be able to gather together around the world, literally around the world, because we always have people from Africa, from, uh, the, from Europe, from South America, from the United States, Canada. So this truly is an international ministry, and we reach thousands of people every week with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so this is an opportunity for us to be able to just gather together no matter where we are and praise God and give, give Jesus just a, a big, giant thank you for this opportunity for us to be able to come together and praise him. And so that's why we begin every service, every little church service that we have, because that's what this is, a little church service. That's why we begin it with these words, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so I want to thank you again for, for being here. And um, come on, wake up. I'm, one of the things we do every every. Sunday morning is we have a time of scripture reading. We have a time of prayer. I give a little message. And so it's a time for us to be able to just reconnect with the Bible, with each other, uh, and with God through prayer. So let's begin by having a moment of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're the God who created the heavens and the earth. Everything we see, touch, smell, feel, experience. Is a gift from you. And so we thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for our families. We thank you for, for the opportunities that you give us to be able to, to share your good news with, with everyone we meet. And so we praise your name, O oh Lord, always and forever. Amen. Well, I have been talking about Isaiah 40 for the last few weeks, and today we're going to wrap this up with the last... Um, I guess few verses. I'm going to read actually Isaiah 40, uh, 28 through 31. And I'm reading in the New International Version. And so if you wish to join me, you can, you can, you can join with me in, in your own Bible translation. Or you can just listen to these words from Isaiah 40. Do you not know? <laughs> Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So says the word of God. I, Isaiah, thousands of years ago, gave us these words that we need to hear today. Words where we get tired Words where we feel like we just can't keep going on. Words where we get uplifted and motivated and inspired because God is our creator. And today we can rest in the knowledge that through Jesus and through God's love for us, we can keep on keeping on until we find and succeed in the way that God has led. And so... This passage opens up with two rhetorical questions. At the time, they were absolutely rhetorical. Today, uh, I'm not absolutely sure you would say the rhetorical questions. The question is, do you not know? Have you not heard? Uh, today, there are many people who have not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, that he is the creator of the ends of the earth. In fact, schools in America are teaching just the opposite, that <laughs> there is no such thing as creationism, that there was a big bang and that through evolution, everything exists just 
came into being spontaneously, uh, just on its own, just developed the way it is. And if you look at this from a mathematical perspective of can creation actually create intelligent life on its own? And what are the odds of this happening? Let me put it this way. This may, this may help you. If, if you were to walk through the forest on your birthday and you see in rocks laid out for you a great big sign that says, Happy Birthday, Robert, on your birthday, and with your, your date spelled out below it, what would be the odds of that just happening spontaneously on its own? Or what would make more sense that somebody actually went there and placed those rocks to create that sign? When you look at creation and the way we have intelligent life today, the odds of intelligent life and creation turning out the way it has as we experience reality today, the odds are a hundred times greater uh, that that sign that you see walking through the forest made made it out spontaneously. It's a hundred times greater that that would happen than for creation to happen on its own. It just doesn't happen. It, the odds weigh against that. There has to be a designer. There has to be someone who had input in making it happen. <laughs> Have you not known? Have you not heard? It is the Lord, the everlasting God, who has created the heavens and the earth. Now, here's the important part. He will not grow weary. He will not grow tired. His understanding, no one can fathom. Now, that, that's clear. We cannot begin to fathom the mind and the understanding of God. Uh, I've used this illustration. I love this illustration because it is the only way that I can... It's the best way that I know to understand the, the mind of God. We go through life and we say, okay, if God is all this... If he is loving, if he is caring, if God leads us the way he says he's going to lead us, why is there so much junk in the world? Why is there so much tragedy in the world? Why doesn't he fix this for us? And I believe with all my heart that what we see when we, when we, when we go through life, what we see is the backside of the tapestry. We cannot understand what the whole picture is. All we see is the backside of the tapestry, and we're looking up at this tapestry, and we see all these strings, and we see all these knots, and we see this mess. But we don't see the full picture of the tapestry. <laughs> Not until we, we ascend into heaven and sit it and, and see Jesus face to face and, and see the apostles do we fully uh, uh, see then uh, the full tapestry. The picture that God is creating, and at that point, what happens is we see this, we see some of the tragedies that happen in our life, and we can't understand. And suddenly, we see the the sparkle in the in the eye of a uh, of the tapestry. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He'll not grow tired or weary, and His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. <laughs> if you're weary and if you feel weak today, God is on your side. That's what this is saying. He is on your side. You need to hear this. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. <laughs> and this kind of goes against the, the normal thought process of the day. In fact, it isn't that much different today. The, the tired, uh, those who need strength, those who are weary, <laughs> where are they going to find their strength? Well, if you turn to God and you look to him and his grace and his love for you, you're going to receive strength that you didn't expect believe was possible. You're going to receive the power that you didn't think you had before. <laughs> you know, today is Today is June 3rd, 1965, and it was on this day 
I'm sorry, today is June 3rd, 2018. But it was on this day, June 3rd, 1965, that the first American walked in space. <laughs> 1965, this day, the first American walked in space. And do you notice I said the first American? Because it wasn't the first person to walk in space. The first person to walk in space was a Russian. They did it in March of 1965, a few months before we did it in the U.S. The, the Americans did it. You know, there was, a, many people have heard about the space race. And that was the event of the 60s. The 60s generations was the space race. I was a child in the 60s. And I witness this. I had the privilege of being able to turn on my television, nothing but black and white television, a fuzzy black and white picture, and I would watch every single person in America would watch as every single uh, um, uh, exploration of space took place and the different and the different rockets would take off. But the first man to, to go into space was a Russian. That was in April 1961. <laughs> and a month later, the U.S. puts their man into space. We were a month behind Russia from the get-go. And the race began on May 25th, 1961, as President Johnson addressed the, the, the Congress. And he gave that famous speech where he said, "In this, before this decade ends, we will put a man on the moon and return him home safely. The goal was set. The race began. That was 1961. Five years later, the U.S. is still behind in this race as the Russians put their man in space. And a month later, this day, June 3rd, 1965, we put our man in space. And the race is losing. But here's the promises we have. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. <laughs> but those who wait for the Lord. And in this translation it says, those who hope in the Lord. And in Spanish, it's interesting, you have the same word for hope and for wait. It's the same thing. A hope is an expectation. We are waiting with with, with bated breath, those who wait in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They will walk and never faint. Those are the promises that the prophet Isaiah, the words of God coming to us, promises that as we continue to hold on with wings that he will give us wings like eagles. We'll run and not be tired. We'll walk and not faint. Well, you know, it was another five years later. On July 20, 1969, I remember sitting at my friend's house. His name was Mark Lisma. And his father's name was Harold Lisma. Harold was the... Harold was the minister of evangelism at the Garden Grove Community Church where my father pastored. And I was, golly, just a young man. And like the rest of the world, anyone young enough to remember, remembers where they were sitting when they saw and heard the announcement about the lunar module landing and Neil Armstrong and has landed. <laughs> the eagle has landed. Those who wait on the Lord will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That was July 20, 1969. The eagle landed. And I could go on talking about some of the interesting scenarios I've had with, <clears throat> with Buzz Aldrin. I could talk about... David Liesma, the uh, the astronaut, uh, I could talk about, because I was at his, I was at, in his home watching that landing with him. <laughs> and he got motivated to go into the program. But here's the words we have. 
The words we have are these. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He'll not grow weary or tired. He increases the power of the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. <laughs> they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This is the promises we have. These are the words we have from the Bible. Wait on the Lord. Have hope in his promises. And you will see the glory of the Lord in your life. But today... Tomorrow, and always. <laughs> this is our message today. And this is my message of hope and inspiration for you. So I just want to say again <clears throat> that this is the day the Lord has made. This is an opportunity for us to be able to come together and to worship and to experience the presence of our living God. And so and as a church service, a regular church service, we have a call which we've, had, which we've heard, we have a scripture reading, we have a time of prayer. Uh, I want to have another time of prayer, and then we'll go into... Well, before we do that, actually, uh, then the next one of the things we do is, is we collect an offering, and if you would like to make a donation to this ministry, if you wish to, to participate in giving your, your tithes and offerings, you can do so by simply texting RSM to 360-900-1338. That's... Text RSM to 360-900-1338, and uh, you can participate in our offering. One of the beautiful things about uh, giving is that it is an opportunity for us to be able to show God that we trust him with that which we give to him. It requires tremendous faith. It is a concrete action where we actually make a gift to God's work, and it can be to your local church, it can be to this ministry, it can be to a variety of different things. But there comes a point where you have to say, oh Lord, I'm giving this sacrificially. Because every time you give something, it is a sacrificial thing to do. It means you are giving up something. And you're giving that up because you know that the power of God has the power to replicate things in ways we cannot imagine. It's like when Jesus fed the 5,000. He, he has his, his apostles, what, his apostles came to him and said, Lord, what are we going to do? There's all these people who, who are hungry. And Jesus said, well, feed them. <laughs> how, how can we feed them? We don't have enough bread or enough fish to, to be able to feed 5,000 people. He said, well, what do you have? I said, well, we've got five loaves of bread and two fish. <laughs> and Jesus said, well, then bring them to me. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and he started dividing them. <laughs> and the Bible records that everyone was, was fed till they were full, and they had 12 baskets of food left over with two fish and five loaves. It was a miracle. And that's what God does with that which we give to him. He takes it and he, he creates it in such a way that somehow, by giving, we receive far more back in return from what we actually give. <laughs> and so we have this opportunity to be able to give. Not, to, not You don't have to give it to Robert Shore Ministries. You can give it anywhere else. The important thing is that you actually participate in the act of giving. You make a sacrifice. You tell Jesus, you tell God, I have faith in you, in your promises, in your words, and I'm going to do this concretely. Even though I have bills I can't pay, even though I have things I can't, I'm having struggles with financially, I'm going to plant a seed in faith today. And here it is. So let's have a prayer right now for all of those who are planting seed. Dear Heavenly Father, we are planting seed today with this financial contribution to you. And we give it to you in faith, realizing that your promises are true. 
that your word is real. That when you said, bring your tithes to the storehouse and put me to the test and see if I will not bring out such a blessing upon you, that your storehouses won't be able to contain it. That those words are true and real. We believe in you, Lord. As in an expression of our trust and faith in you, we give these gifts. And so take them, O oh Lord, and multiply them in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. And so we thank you, Lord, and we praise your name, always and forever. Amen. So there's another prayer. We've had our offering. I'll, I'll just a, a short, a, just a couple of a little, just a couple announcements here. Uh, the one thing I want to say is that in August, I've been invited by the president of Uganda to come to his country. And so I'm going to be going to Uganda in the first week of August. I ask you to keep your prayers in that endeavor. Uh, I'll be speaking in churches there. I will be speaking in, a, in a peace conferences. Uh, I will be just doing whatever I can to be able to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Because that's what I have been called to do. That is my full-time job. I've been doing this since I was since I graduated from college and started seminary in 1976. I was ordained in 1980, and I have been doing this ever since. It is, it is what God has called me to do. And so I thank you for your gifts to be able to allow me to be able to do this. And so I want you to continue to pray that as we as the plans for Uganda materialize, that we will reach as many people as possible with the good news of Jesus Christ. Because that's what it's all about. I'm simply out there sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone I meet in every situation I can. And so again, this has been a wonderful time of celebration. I hope you've, in, you've enjoyed it and experienced it. And I just pray that you'll continue to to allow the Holy Spirit of God to use you, to, to rest upon this, the reality uh, that God is with you, that when you feel weak and tired, just wait on the Lord, and He'll renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like eagles. He'll run and not be tired. He'll walk and not faint. So, that's our message for today. Hold on to it. Keep on keeping on and realize that in all things, in all ways, God is blessing you. And so, oh Lord, continue to be with every single person who hears the sound of this voice. Bless them, O oh Lord, in ways we cannot even begin to imagine. Give them happiness, joy, peace, prosperity, goodness. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We praise your name always and forever. Amen. Goodbye, everybody. God loves you, and so do I. Bye-bye.